All right, welcome everyone to today's LRD faculty webinar series session. In this uh, edition, we are going to focus on our great new resource, Drama Online. Andrew is here to help walk us through all the amazing offerings in this database. Um, as a reminder, this is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube page and shared with you once it is available. Anyone who is attending live today will also receive a certificate of attendance. Uh, after Andrew's presentation, we will have time for Q&A. So Andrew, um, just want to show everyone online. Um, Drama Online is available through our library's website, udc.libguides.com, under our here A to Z resource list. Easiest way to get to it is to just click on A to Z resource list. And then once that comes up, click on D. Do apologize for the slowness. We have competing video right now, I think, with my husband. All right, click on D. And then Drama Online is here at the bottom. And once you click on that link, it is proxied so you can access it from off campus and you will log in using your UDC email and password. So that is how you get to Drama Online. And now I'm gonna stop my screen share and hand this over to Andrew. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Megan, for inviting me to do this demo this morning. I'm really pleased to be here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint. Um, can everybody see my screen? Just maybe a wave or a nod. You're good to go. Good to go. Great. All right. So let's go ahead and get that started. So again, um, my name is Andrew Robbins Pollock. I'm a senior account manager here at Bloomsbury Publishing, working with the digital resources in libraries. And I just want to thank everyone for attending today, as well as for acquiring Drama Online a few months ago. Um, it's been a really tough year for libraries and your business with us is most sincerely appreciated. So I just want to thank you for myself and on behalf of all of us here at Bloomsbury. So what I'm gonna to do today is have a short PowerPoint presentation and then I'm gonna follow that up with a demo of the site and leave some time for questions at the end. Um, also in the PowerPoint presentation, there, is an Easter, there are Easter eggs for my favorite television show. So pay attention to some of the slides, you might be able to figure it out and that'll be my question for you at the end. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so Drama Online is our award-winning digital library, and it offers thousands of playtexts and hundreds of hours of filmed live productions. We have specially developed functionality to support teaching and learning, and that's very important in this time of digital learning. It's also one of library journals must-have databases for the year 2020. We have over 3,000 playtexts across such diverse themes as gender and race, we also have classics from uh, Bloomsbury Publishing that includes Art and Shakespeare, Methuen Drama, as well as our just released Oberon books. There are also collections from Nick Hearn Books, Playwrights Canada Press, and Aurora Metro Books. We have a new partnership with Theatre Communications Group coming in 2022 that we are also very excited about. Our streaming video includes classics and modern plays from the National Theatre, the Royal Shakespeare Company Live, Globe on Screen, Stratford Festival Collection, and many more. One of the things that's really neat is the variety of interpretations that we have, and I'll be covering a couple interpretations in Frankenstein later, but right now I just wanted to highlight that picture in the center that's from a National Theatre production uh, retelling of Alice in Wonderland for the digital era, and you can see that the character there is holding a phone in her left hand. It's kind of dim, but it's there, but it's called Wonder.Land, and that is one that I'm planning to watch. We have 400 audio plays from LA Theatre Works that feature diverse actors, and these cover many themes as well. We also have ebook collections from Arden Shakespeare, Methuen Drama, and others that cover context, criticism, theater craft, as well as short guides and biographies. There's also a series of 60 videos that cover physical actor training from A to Z. There are teaching materials and study guides to supplement the filmed live productions. And there are subject guides as well to support digital learning and research. 
We wrap all of this up with an intuitive interface that offers multiple search and browse options to quickly access content. One additional feature is our character grids, as well as our playtext and monologue finder. Finally, for any librarians on the call today, we have a librarians page where you can get MARC records, usage reports, you can sign up for a newsletter with updates, and download promotional materials. So at this point, I'm going to go click over to the site itself. Maybe I will click over to the site itself. There we go. And I will go ahead and give you a demo of our Drama Online site. So this is the Drama Online homepage, and I'll give you a tour of the homepage. We are still just uh, seeing the slides. What? You're still seeing the slides. OK, thank you. Let me stop that. out of that and how about now you're good to go now thank you okay thank you sorry for that little delay all right so the top of this this is our masthead for the drama online homepage at the top you'll see where your access is provided by you can also create a personal profile this is independent of the login information that Megan supplied earlier. And I'll talk about some other really interesting things that can be done with your personal profile a little later. Um, this part here where it says Drama Online and all of these things will follow you through all of your searches and browses and views of any of the content in the site. You can always click the Home button to get back to the home page. You have options to explore by theme genre and form, or the period. You can browse by these multiple areas of content. If you want to go to a specific collection, we have a box where you can scroll a drop down box to click on the collection. There's also an about page with some further information, as well as a librarians page, which I'm not going to click on right now, but we will cover that towards the end of the demo. This is our search bar. You can also add access the advanced search and the advanced play search. We have a rotating carousel of our sort of new and featured content that you can look at. Further down this page, there's our play finder as well as the monologue finder. And there are multiple ways to get to these as well. You can explore some of our featured content, which right now we're featuring Hamlet and that rotates um, seasonally. You can click into the learning resources and access free teaching tools. And then as we get down to the bottom of the page, you have some other options to get right into some of the various content or sign up for our newsletter, view news and updates, or sign up for the Twitter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an explore to show you some of our streaming video content. So we're going to go ahead and explore by theme. So we have um, some extensive tagging within themes to show all of these sort of options for exploring our content through theme. And I'm gonna scroll down, hopefully not making you dizzy on the, while you're viewing this. And we're gonna explore by race. The number here is the number of matches where race has been tagged as a potential theme. So hopefully the um, screen is keeping up with my text. I have noticed that before. So hopefully there's no delay and I do apologize if there is. So here is what happens when you explore using the theme of race. Your, uh, your search term, or in this case, the explore term is at the top. You have some images that you can uh, view or go into the content where those images come from. There is taxonomy on the left side of the page showing the number of matches for, in this case, race per person. Um, you have content type, plays, genre and forms, period. There's our themes again, as well as practice subject, practitioner roles, research fields, number of scenes, number of characters, word length. So there's a lot of ways to um, refine the content once you've got there. 
So what we want to do here is I want to narrow this down to video content. So I'm going to click more from content type and narrow it down to video. So now we have seven matches for race and video. And I'm going to go ahead and click into the first one right here. I'm not going to pretend that I can pronounce the name as it's in French. I had some conversational French, but my wife has a little bit more French than I do. She lived there for a year and my pronunciation is atrocious, so I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. But we're going to go ahead and click into this um, production, which was written by Lorraine Hansberry, who also wrote A Raisin in the Sun. So this is a streaming video that production that we have from the National Theater Collection. You'll see that the subject taxonomy remains on the left side. We've also added some related content that the user can click into. There's a short summary of the play and then the cast below that, as well as an image gallery specific to this play. If you want to view the video, you just go ahead and click there. It starts and then you can you know, go through the play as needed if you just want to look at specific parts. There is a clip finder, which I think is really handy, and I'll show that later in when I'm talking about the personal profile, but you can save specific clips. You, of course, can also control your volume. We have closed captions, and of course, you can go full screen. You can also view the transcript while you're watching the play. So that's the explore option. Next, we're going to go ahead and browse by contents, and I'm going to use this to show you a play text. So I'm going to go ahead and browse by plays. And that gives you an A to Z list of all of the plays that we currently have. We'll have more of those when the theater communications group goes live. And then if you don't want to scroll, 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 and scroll, you can just click the letter of the play you wish to start looking for. So I'm going to click F and I'm going to scroll down. I do have to do some scrolling here to get to Frankenstein. And you'll see that Frankenstein has three matches. I'm going to go ahead and open this one in a new window. So we have that a little bit later, but that's one of the two video productions of Frankenstein from the National Theater collection. And if you haven't seen these, these are really interesting. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch and Johnny Lee Miller both play the creature in these productions, but then when where Benedict Cumberbatch is playing the creature, Johnny Lee Miller is playing Dr. Frankenstein, so they actually reverse roles. And I've watched the Benedict Cumberbatch one, and it is really good. But right now we just want to look at a play text, so we're going to click on the Frankenstein play text. And you'll see our subject taxonomy again remains on the left. We now have the related content um, showing those two Frankenstein productions. So you have a short um, summary of the play at the top, some of the bibliographic information, some information about Faber drama, and then you can go right into the play text itself. So now we're going to look at some of the play tools within the play. So our play tools are one of the really unique features of Drama Online. These are character grids, and the character grids show the entire cast on the left. And then what you can do is you can see these little um, dots or bubbles that show roughly the amount of content or word count per character in each scene. At the bottom, this shows the amount of words for all the characters in each scene, excuse me. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the creature. And what that does, and we're going to jump to words and speeches below. Now we have just the creature highlighted and you see that's in blue and you can hover over these various bars to show how many words that character has in each scene. Now, if we want to sort of look at the relative amount of words between characters, we can go ahead and add another character and we'll add Victor Frankenstein. And you'll see that he's been added in green and you can see where there are, where 
either one or both have dialogue up to two of their sort of pivotal scenes towards the end of the play where they both have a lot of dialogue. At any point, you can also click on this to read the play that's from here or the previous page that we were on and it will give you the play text. The table of contents will remain on the left, so if you want to click ahead further into the play, it's very easy to do that. One other thing that I do want to mention and hopefully this will keep up with me. Oops, I went too far back. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, the fun part of the live demo where things slow down on us. I'm so sorry about this. So what I'm gonna do is I have all of these open in a separate window and I'm just gonna go ahead and open all of those up. So we have those in case I'm unable to do the live demo. So I do apologize for jumping around here. I did want to show one other thing. So we have uh, here that I forgot to show you, you have the number of roles. So it shows you the number of total roles by female, male, and unassigned. So if you're looking for sort of specific um, uh, division of roles, that's one way that you'll be able to do that. So now I'm gonna jump back on track and we're gonna look at collections. So these are all of the collections that you have access to at the University of District Columbia right now, which is everything in Drama Online. And I'm gonna use this to show one of our eBooks. And I'm gonna do that in the Critical Studies and Performance Practice collection. So we're gonna look right now at Macbeth. And you'll notice that the recently viewed content has now moved to the right. For Macbeth, you have the bibliographic information at the, the top, as well as the table of contents. We're going to click right into this particular chapter, which has a table of contents. You'll now see that the subject taxonomy has returned now that we're into specific content. You have chapter headings and footnotes that you can click on if you wish as well as the page breaks over here on the right. At any point while you're doing this search or within content, you can save the search or the link. You can print the content. You can share the content with a colleague or you can cite the content. And this is where the personal profile comes in handy. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and save this content. which I have already done. So I'm gonna remove it and we're gonna save it again. So it's gonna give me a folder to save it in. And we're gonna select my folder and save. So now I'm gonna go into my content in the personal profile and you can look at my saved items. And you'll see that that search that we just did or that, that bookmark that we just clicked on is now saved within here for other for us to get back to quickly. You can also save searches as well as video clips. So now I'm going to take just a short break so you can view a video clip that I've saved and have a drink of water. So this is rather funny. funny. I call this Cumberbatch over Axe, but it's awesome anyway, and hopefully the video will keep up. And so the way that you can do that is anytime you're in one of the productions, you can click this clip option and you can slide back and forth on the, with these options and you'll be able to get when you want the clip to start and when you want it to end. 
you can then generate a URL that's just for, in this case, those nine minutes. And you can save that in your personal profile. And then as we go back up to the personal profile, it will now show up as my clips and you can share that URL with anyone you may, who may, who else may want to look at the content. So being conscious of time, I'm gonna make sure that we get through everything else. So we have our about tab, which you can look at these few things. And I do want to make sure to show you how our search works. So this search will be a new search from any page that you can get to within Drama Online. And we're gonna do a search for Hamlet. So again, we have our image results, playwright. So this is similar to a search you've seen before. And that just gives you all your results for Hamlet. With this many results, you may want to narrow that down. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the advanced search and do Hamlet. I'm gonna go ahead and add a field. So we can look at things just for Hamlet that are contained within the Art and Shakespeare. So now we have less matches, but still quite a few. So that is something that you may wish to narrow down further, but you can use all of the various other options to narrow down your search. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go into the advanced play search. We're gonna go ahead and use Hamlet again. You do again have the option to add feel, fields. You can also um, leave that blank and search for word count, total roles, the types of roles, and then you can give them you know, less than or more. So if you want to see number of female roles more than five, you would do a search, of course, leaving Hamlet blank. You can also do the same thing in the monologue search. So we're gonna go ahead and do female with a word count of more than 1,000. The search comes up and it shows all of the play text that we have with female roles that have a total of more than 1,000 words. This is then something you could save in your personal profile and go back to that later. So finally, I wanna take a look at some of the teaching materials. And we'll use Frankenstein as our example. So you'll find a teacher resources page and we have National Theater Collection Learning Resources. We have learning guides for most of the productions, rehearsal insights, key stage three packs, uh, which is something I wasn't familiar with until I looked at this page, but that's typically for homeschooling. There are also lesson plans and you can download introductions based on level and subject. And then you can click into the various productions. So finally, we'll look at the librarians tab and typically there's everything that you would need to see there, especially like your mark records, your usage statistics, and your promotional materials, and a way to contact us if you have issues. But from my email, which was on the first slide, you, are always feel free, you can always feel free to reach out directly to me. So at this point, um, I'll keep my share open option, but I'm ready to answer any questions that people may have. Great. Thank you, Andrew. We have two questions in the chat. The first one is, how do you acquire content and how often, often do you update and add content? Okay. Um, we have been acquiring content um, rather um, vigorously, I guess is, is the best way to describe it. We did add the Stratford Shakespeare, Stratford Festival Shakespeare collection late last year. And then um, just a few weeks ago, we added the Oberon collection. So I would say that there are probably about one to two new collections per year. Um, I'm gonna hedge that a little bit by saying I've only been with Bloomsbury for a year, 
Um, there was quite a bit of content here before I started, but if I sort of look at how the database has evolved, it seems like there's about one or two collections per year. Um, and then we typically will add, um, add the content as soon as we have everything loaded. Oberon was um, so large that we're having to add it in two parts because it's a total of 500 texts. Great. And uh, the second question we have is at UDC, we use the Blackboard um, class platform. Is there a mm -hmm. way to integrate content, particularly the clips into Blackboard itself? So could you export a video clip and upload it? Or could you directly link to it? Um, I know you can directly link to it, but I will actually need to get back to you on that Blackboard question. I apologize that I don't have that at hand. Okay. Thank you. I, I will certainly find out and I will e email make it. And if anyone else has any questions, feel free to raise your hand, unmute yourself, or put your comment or question in the chat. Okay, well, that give everyone a chance to put those in there. I do wanna thank everyone for attending today. Um, as a part of attending, you will get a certificate of attendance. I will also share the recording um, when that is available. And I am also going to drop a uh, assessment form into the uh, chat. We would love to have your feedback on this as this webinar series is a new thing we are doing. And so we'd just love to hear more about this. We have another question came in. Um, I'm going to take a guess that your favorite show is Sherlock. Um, you were close. Um, good. Uh, that certainly makes sense with, with all the Benedict Cumberbatch I was talking about. It was actually Doctor Who. Um, there were four actors that played various doctors in the PowerPoint. I showed um, Christopher Eccleston, Jody Whittaker, um, let's see, and... David Tennant. So that's just three, but there was also a companion, Billy Piper, who played Rose Tyler. Great show. Yep. Are we going to say drama online is bigger on the inside? We could say that, yes. <laughs> but my room is purple, not blue. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments? While we are recording, I will also offer a chance to ask questions when we're not recording. I do know some people prefer to not be recorded. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm not seeing anything come in. So I'm going to say uh, thank you and end the recording, but we will stay online.